Octavio Medellin was born in Mexico, the son of a mining man who worked in the mountains. The family came to San Antonio when he was a small boy. And though his formal education had to stop after the death of his father, the carving, the cutting, the casting, all that would be his true vocation soon began and never stopped. His career grew, unpretentiously but steadily. His sculpture was exhibited in the East, included in books on American artists, and there is a repository of his working papers at the University of Syracuse. Sometimes he saw his subjects realistically, sometimes fully in the abstract. He is equally at home in the many media of sculpture, clay, metal, stone, wood, glass. A major commission for the city of Dallas is soon to join the body of his work, most of which is to be seen in North Texas, inside and outside of churches and synagogues, schools, offices, and homes. Medellin came here in 1938 to work and teach, first at the North Texas State University in Denton, then at the Dallas Museum of Fine Arts, and for some time now in his own studio and school at the Oak Cliff Creative Arts Center. If you do what I tell you, see, then you'll have enough arm because the arm is going to be very narrow. See, so why don't you take and do this first, the, the breast. Take and narrow it and then cut it down to the line of the arm. Also, you have to come up into here, see, See, this is deviating you from the, from the vision you have in mind. If you elongate this, then you have a harmony of the long form. You never get it if you have this stubby form. See this part, this mm -hmm. cut you have? Bring it up to here. Okay. And then you'll have a long form. And that gives you that feeling of long form, you see. So why don't you go ahead and do that? They began mixing the clay by hand or else I don't want them in the class. Not until you learn how to mix clay, then you learn to do build clay, and then you learn to do other things, because when you build clay, you learn form in space, and you begin to get be conscious of all that. In sculpture, many pieces, many forms in a design is very, com very hard and difficult. And I got two, my Yeah, you got two involved. Oh, that's a tricky one. I tell you, one thing to do is to get a water sandpaper, see, that you can buy. And that water sandpaper, you use water, and you, you rub it, and you won't have those scratches on. Because you would have it, you have to have it immaculate in, uh, from scratches until, so that you can polish it. Okay. Yeah. All right? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Consuelo and Octavio Medellin have been married for more than 40 years and live still in the house they bought long ago because its three-car garage could become his studio. Their three children are grown and gone from home now, but they were babies in 1938 when the whole family traveled to Yucatan to live for three months among the Indians in the ruins of Chichen Itza. Even in 1947, when the drawings he made there were published in book form by the Dallas Museum of Fine Arts, the world at large was generally unaware of the full importance of that earliest American culture. But the effect on Medellin of the first direct connection with his pre-Columbian heritage was tremendously powerful. So I uh, decided I would start drawing the designs that were there, copying them. I didn't do them exactly in scale, I just drew them with black and white drawings, but pencil. And it took me months because the first day that you look at the carvings, you don't see what was there. All you see is like an erosion on the rock. But then when the sun moves around it, then you begin to see the designs of the carvings. There was a second thing I landed, I started to look into to see what it could do for my work as a, as a sculptor. And I started to uh, study the carvings and trying to look back into the, the, what 
was behind them, what it, they meant behind each hieroglyphic inscription that was there. But still, I live in the modern world as a sculptor, and I keep that heritage that I can't deny the fact that there is there behind me. Uh, neither do I want to copy it. I don't want to be an imitator of the Maya or the Olmec or the Toltec or, or any of them. But it gave, did give me a rich understanding of design because that's what I was after, trying to, it was a school to me that taught me by me, just simply making those drawings that I did. That schooling had its effect on the entire city in another way. In 1952, Jerry Bywaters, then director of the Dallas Museum of Fine Arts, bought these four objects from an acquaintance of Medellin, and so began a collection of pre-Columbian art that would be expanded by... He has never lost that openness to medium and to change. What a work is to express determines his design and his material. Not even the commission for the new Dallas City Hall, significant and gratifying as it is, alters that direct and intuitive approach. When I was asked about this project, that to me it was a very important project, I uh, went to the site, the new City Hall, and of course, I was very impressed by it. I had to get blueprints. I designed the scale wall of the project, of the city hall wall. From there, I started to play or feel the space together with the impression that was the architecture made to me. So that became into one thing, which was this design that I developed, see, and is, has something to do with uh, the area of Dallas, the growth, the growing, the embracing, which is the metroplex, you might say, the, what is, is what, I, what I call this thing, the metroplex. I developed, started to develop the form by using wires, and become, uh, getting it into three-dimensional form. Later on, I developed it by making a sort of an armature of wires in the already three-dimensional form, and then I started to form the, the plaster, because after you, you made the study of the plaster, you have to develop it into the final work, which is the lead. And this is the first challenge that you have the second challenge is to do the enlarging of the model. So you actually take this lead, and a sheet lead, and you begin to beat it from inside and outside, from both sides. You actually hang, hang it like a skin, and you stretch it, and then you beat it into the, the forms that you begin to do.